Welcome to Harpen on Rugby, the fan site covering all things to do with Leinster and Ireland since 2008. My name is Jeff Pagano, and joining me today to tell us all about her upcoming rugby tour is someone making her 15th pod appearance. She's generally on talking about Munster in Ireland, but who's, she's also contributed to many a written article, including an excellent fan's account of the 2017 Lions Tour of New Zealand. Welcome back to Michelle Tobin. Thanks, Jeff. So anyway, like I said, Michelle penned a diary of her travels around New Zealand with a group of friends and had all intentions to go to South Africa in 2021 until, well, we all know why rugby matches weren't happening around that time, so there's no need to go over it again. However, sometimes the rugby gods can show a little bit of mercy, and now she has the opportunity to not only travel, but actually visit the very same stadium where those three Lions tests took place, only this time her jersey would be green rather than red, as both the Irish women's and men's squads are taking part in the 2022 Rugby World Cup 7s. So, Michelle, why don't you just start by telling us how the trip came about? Well, the trip came about basically because, um, as you probably know, a lot of the original group that I went to New Zealand with um, had booked again for South Africa. And I suppose I do want to to clarify one thing because you said I, I traveled with around New Zealand with my friends I went to New Zealand with and strangers made friends. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and definitely made friends and actually it's closer to a family yeah um so yeah there, a lot of us had booked to go back in 2021 and then obviously there was disappointment when it didn't happen and um there are some people in the group who are a little bit older who felt that hold on waiting 12 years might not be a runner and and for all of us you know none of us are guaranteed tomorrow so we had been talking with mark from rugby travel ireland about alternatives and the um rugby world cup sevens came up now a gang of us had been in 2019 a gang of us had gone to the hong kong sevens and had an absolute blast so the idea of going to the Sevens Rugby World Cup, it, it's special because it gives everyone a chance to support their team because all of the home nations are there. So it seemed perfect. And what Mark and Rugby Travel Ireland did was he, while he'd normally run a Sevens as a sort of a, a long weekend package, he's actually built a couple of tours of different lengths to allow us to actually travel and see some stuff in South Africa that we would have done last year, last year had we been able to go. So uh, Wednesday, <laughs> South Africa, here I come. Wow, that's brilliant. That's amazing. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's really good to look And Dave, at Rugby Travel Ireland, I mean, they've looked after you. Like they, they organized everything and uh, they had you all set to go in 2021. And, uh, you know, you, you, you dealt with them, but they, they, pretty much, uh, they pretty much did well by you, considering all that was happening. Uh, they were brilliant. I was actually out with them in South Africa in 2018. It was, a, it was the first time um, the South African teams were in whatever it was called then, the Pro 16, I think, or Pro 14. Um, so I, I have traveled to South Africa with them before. There's a little bit of overlap on this trip, but not much. And it's, it's with a great bunch of people. So uh, really looking forward to it. Yeah, and I was looking at the... Um... The actual schedule and 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 how, how the whole thing's panning out it's, it's interesting like the ireland game is actually first uh mm. the men's are the very first game on the very first day but before we go before we even go into that let's talk dates and stuff and when it's when it's actually happening because um it's important to know when uh, when, when all this is going down it's uh friday saturday and sunday september the 9th 10th and 11th um the and, and the way it the way it kind of works is that it's the men's and the women's squads there's two uh world cups going on at the same time uh over the weekend and um it's it's kind of a it's a straight knockout kind of format um so basically if you lose now you, you'll still have matches but you'll go down into a challenge competition and a bowl competition whatever so you 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 have to yeah if you want to actually win the world cup you do have to win all your games which is which puts a lot of pressure but still makes it that much more exciting and ireland are starting on um on the Friday, the first match in the whole tournament, the men are be, be playing Portugal at 7.45 a.m. our time here in Ireland. And then the women's are on the same day. They play Brazil at uh, 12.54. Um, so it's, it'd be like an early start for you on that day. Yeah. There, but it's well, going to be good anyway. The, the two tournaments aren't exactly the same because the, the women's is a it's a straight off tournament. Mm. Whereas because of the number of, of men's teams that have they have qualified, um, they're they're having an almost get into the World Cup, so it's a pre round of sixteen, and that's our first game 
on the Friday morning. And then because the men's and the women's are being played in the same stadium, the days are long. Mm. Look, you know, there's matches at 10 o'clock at night. So, but sevens is brilliant because you just sit there all day and great rugby happens in front of you. And like the set, the fans that go to sevens are incredible. I've been lucky that I said I was at Hong Kong. I've done Paris sevens and it's just, it's so much fun. And there's a permanent atmosphere. So it, I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah. And from, from an Irish fan's point of view, I mean, I think, it's, I think it's really important that we that that we get behind the teams here because there, there, there doesn't tend to be a lot of um, coverage or hype going on around when they're playing and uh, I mean it, it, and I, I suppose that dates back is because we stayed out of it for so long and uh, it's only in the last five six years that, that we've really started taking it seriously and putting the proper investment and we've reaped the rewards from that investment both in men's and women's I mean you look at the um, the way the way the World Series works is they have tournaments oh it's, it's a bit like formula one i think they they have like tournaments in different cities and you get points based on where you finish in all the tournaments and whoever has the most points and ireland finished uh fifth the men finished fifth on the on the, the circuit this year they they were just in playing in la at the weekend and the women actually finished fourth in the in the in the world group it's been it's been it's been really good and and on those weekends i mean from a spectator's point of view like the games are always streamed on there before i mean four or five times, but I think that the most important reason we should get involved and show an interest is that what we want to do is have a leg of that um, World Sevens here in Ireland. I mean, Dublin, Limerick, Belfast, wherever. Um, and uh, like you say yourself, it's a great day out and I think Ireland would be a perfect place to have us. Absolutely. I can see great days in any of the big stadiums. Now, there is a little caveat on our positions, both in the men's and the women's series. Uh, this year, neither series was based on the full number of games mm. played. So the women, uh, the points and the positions uh, were calculated based on your top four games. Best four, yeah, yeah. That's of six. And then in the men's, they had a, a nine series uh, competition, but they discounted the weakest two. And even that gave us an advantage because the New Zealand team didn't play, either men or women, didn't play the first four games. Mm. And then the men from Fiji, or was it the women? Sorry, I can't remember. One of the Fijian teams missed um, a game because of COVID. Now, the Fijians, both men and women, are incredible. I mean, watching the Fijians run is Oh, it, it's a it's fantastic as a spectator and their fans get behind them oh my god it's just it really is something special and I'm looking forward to experiencing it again yeah. but definitely to see it in Ireland I think because w once you go to, to a big sevens games I know we have fantastic club sevens and things like pig and porter and all these in the summer and they're fantastic but actually putting it into a big stadium that's full of fans from all over the world it's just something special. And I think if you experience it, you'll get the bug. You'll be addicted. And, you know, there's a whole lot of fun and a lot of travel that you can do to see these tournaments. And I'm I'm lucky that I'm heading off to one of the further ones this week. Absolutely. Yeah, because, I mean, that's an important point that, that there are, there is actually a lot of uh, popular sevens competitions here in Ireland, like on a yearly basis. It's not like we've never had it. I mean, they've had one down at Kinsale and there's lots of places around the country. They, they, they've had regular tournaments, but to have this particular one in Ireland as well would be a really good focus. And, you know, the, when it comes to the Irish team, I mean, you've seen these, um, these players uh, both men's and women's, they've become names in their own right. You've got like Jordan Conroy, Terry Kennedy, uh, Amy Lee Murphy Crow on the women's team. They've they've become like you know stars on the circuit in their own right. And when you when you watch these games, you hear the commentators talking about them, and there's a real buzz whenever they get the ball. They know something's exciting going to happen. They've really they've I mean they've they've they're, they're really starting to find their level in 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 these competitions. So hopefully hopefully one day we'll get a competition here here in Ireland. Absolutely. And, you know, I have I have hopes for both our teams, probably more so for the women. Um, but definitely, I, I hope come Sunday of, of the World Cup, I hope both teams are still in contention. And no matter what tournament they end up playing in, I'll be there, I'll be in green, I'll be shouting loud. And 
you know, so will. And, and it's not just us. Um, I was talking to a lovely lady that I know through the Leinster Supporters Club, because somehow I do know people through the Leinster Supporters Club. <laughs> they let you in. And uh, she's heading over for the competition with some friends as well. So that's really cool that there will be pockets of Irish people, as well as those who who'll have travelled from Australia and New Zealand people who have a little less of a journey uh, compared to us. But and as you say, you're 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 actually we're talking to you on Monday night. Um, it's like over a week before the uh, the the sevens. Uh, is, is the weekend's actually played so um but you're going over on the wednesday what what kind of what kind of plans do you have up to then any what, what are you planning to go see uh we're we fly into durban and from there we on friday we go to rourke's drift um we have a lot of our our group would either have military backgrounds or have, have an interest either in military history or in in zulu the film or Zulu Dawn, and it, it was something that was added on to the Lions tour, and it's it's something that was kept. Um, so on a, a rainy day earlier in the month, I, I binge watch Zulu Dawn and Zulu. I can't say I'm a whole lot wiser mm. on any of it, but um, there is a plan to have a little informal flag laying ceremony, and the uh, Surgeon General at Rourke's Drift was from Dunleary or Kingstown as it was then. So I've been told I have to lay an Irish flag somewhere and that will be a little bit special. So it might break out the green a little bit early for that. Absolutely. Uh, so we're there for a couple of nights and then we go on, we fly into Cape Town and head to a game reserve for a couple of nights. So we get to have, uh, we have drives at morning, late at night and one during the day. So hopefully, you know, we'll take all the boxes in terms of, of seeing the big five and, and some more animals as well. I know last time I was there, we went to a different place and saw loads of them and it was just incredible. And to have the opportunity, especially the, the dawn, the dawn drives are supposed to be really special. So I'm looking forward to that. And then we go uh, to Stellenbosch for a couple of days. And I can't think what we'll possibly be doing in Stellenbosch. There's nothing really to do there, really, to be, to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah, there, there might be a beverage or two or a vineyard visit or two. Irish people going to Stellenbosch? Oh, I don't well, know now, I don't we know. We are Irish, Scots and Welsh, <laughs> are the group. It is a full... And then when we get to Cape Town, uh, we, we meet up with some more people who are joining uh, for a shorter tour and that, that will complete the Four Nations because there's an English man in that lot. Brilliant. So they're all flying the flags. Actually, speaking of flags, I noticed on Twitter recently you've been trying to get your hands on some of the uh, the I, you know it's you know because of the Irish team uh, the composed the way it is. You, you, it's you, there's a special flag specifically for the Irish rugby team with the four province crests on it. Have you been able to get your hands on those, or what's what's the story there? I've been able to get a version from Flagman.ie. But it's very frustrating because when I started looking for one of these last year or maybe even the year before, I came across an article on the RFU website from before the 2015 World Cup when the RFU had gone on a full out marketing campaign to get people to embrace the flag. Mm. It is Ir the flag of Irish rugby mm. and we are a 32 county team. Um, and they sold them and I know that they sent them out as gifts to members of the supporters club back in the day when they used to send supporters club members gifts. That's another story. Um, so some people do have them, but I think it's really important. Um, you know, both are, are across all levels of our teams. We are an all island team and I think it, it shows respect to the players, you know, watching the, the series there's an awful lot of tricolours at the games, but I noticed at LA there was quite a few of, you know, the flags you'll get if you go to the Aviva, the little smaller mm. flag. So I have one of those in my bag. I have the big because the flag I was able to get was, you know, five foot by three foot. But when, when there's a couple of us behind it, it'll be fine. 
and then there might be a monster flag gun in the bag as well. You know, yeah, for, surely for, not. For, surely not. <laughs> for, well, it, you know, you can never travel without a monster flag because you never know. <laughs> Um, so that the other frustrating thing is that the Sevens jersey, the new Sevens jersey, uh, is probably due out next week, which is pretty appalling timing. Mm. Um, the, I know it wouldn't have it have a huge sales base um, because I had been looking on the Elvery's website because they're the only people who sell them mm. uh, since the start of the summer, and it was a seven to eight year old kids and um, while I, I do tend to wear kids jerseys I certainly don't wear seven to eight um or the very large extra large kind of sizes T taking the number seven a bit too too literally there I think yeah, yeah so um you know I'll I'll go without a sevens jersey but I have plenty of other Irish gear uh funnily enough so I'm well I'm well covered when it comes to rugby gear on this trip that's it. Well, that, that all sounds very really exciting. I really hope, really hope it goes well for you. Well, listen, that's brilliant, Michelle. We're going to leave it there for now. Many thanks for the chat, and I hope you have a great time in Cape Town. We look forward to hearing all about it, and we'll be looking out for you as well when we're, when we're watching back here in Ireland. Hopefully, you'll be back on throughout the season to talk about Ireland, and of course, we'll let you talk about Munster once in a while as well, if you're, if you're, if you're good, you know? Right, so that's that's it for this bonus episode. And keep an eye out on our feed for another one in the next 24 hours when I'll be joined by the owner of a great Twitter account at Irish Women's to harp on the recent tour of Japan. In the meantime, stay safe, everyone. Slum.